No, so impressed with the beauty of the stars and the space. So that is the beginning when you know, I started interested in space. Naoko, I cannot tell you how excited I am to have you here today. Oh, thank you, Les. <laughs> it is my pleasure, you know, to be here with yes, you. Yes. <laughs> I've heard so much about you being the second female astronaut mm -hmm. to go into outer space. Yes, each from Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes, that has that's quite an accomplishment. It's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. It is a fortunate for me to have such an opportunity. Is it something that you wanted to do? Or did you ever think about? The, when did you wait? Mm -hmm. Before we do that, let's start off with the basics. I start with that. Sure. Where were you born? Oh, I was born in Chiba Prefecture in Japan. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I uh, spent my childhood in Hokkaido, Northern Island in Japan, for two years. Is then it? came back to Chiba Prefecture. Okay, was it because of your father's work? Yes, because my father worked for the Self Defense Army in he Japan. He was Jietai? Was he Jietai? Jietai, yes. He was in a parachute jumper. And he, did he do that for how long did he do that? Oh, he, well, did it until you know, his retirement. Oh, so he stayed in the military all the way through? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. How is your father doing now? Oh, he retired now okay. and spent his, you know, relaxing time in the home. So he's enjoying his life. And what, is he living in Chiba now? Yes, he lives in Chiba. Okay. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yes, I have an elder brother. Okay. Yes. How many years difference? Oh, three years difference. Are you guys close? Uh, yes. In elementary school, mm -hmm. were you more physical? Were you a physical kind of person? Were you like mm. a tomboy or were you more <laughs> academic? Uh, kind of both, you know, because I like reading books. At the same time, you know, I like playing outside okay. <laughs> because so, Hokkaido has a lot of nature, right. and I started liking, you know, watching the stars. But would you night. stay in Hokkaido for how long? Uh, for two years. Two years. So, would you were just two years, four years old? How old were you when you mm -hmm. left Hokkaido? Uh, I was in Hokkaido from the age of uh, five through seven. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you went to Hokkaido, you could see all the stars, right? Yes. For the first time. Yes. So I was, you know, so impressed with the beauty of the stars and space. So that is the beginning when you know, I started interested in space. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So what were some of your thoughts when you looked up? Because you can, in Hokkaido, because I've been there many times and I ride mm -hmm. my motorcycle, you can see in some places from horizon to horizon, right. you can see stars and you don't realize how many stars in the sky. Yes. So what were your thoughts? What did, what did you start thinking about? And uh, later on, I you know, went to a planetarium uh, back in Chiba Prefecture and I learned more about the stars. And yeah. you know, of our human bodies are made of star stuff originally. You know, all the particles, atoms, molecules are came from space. So when I learned uh, that and I realized, oh, we are all brothers and sisters. We are siblings and stars and our human bodies, even on the Earth. So that made me feel more interested in space. Yeah. So then from there, when you went to junior high school, did you start studying more about? Mm -hmm. Would you start studying? Were you a channel, oh, channel music when? Oh, uh, okay. I went to Channel Mizu from high school. Oh, from high so school, okay. I, Yeah, went to elementary school and the junior high school and a local public school. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Were you studying about the stars there too? Uh, yes, uh, yes. But at the same time, I started, uh, you know, exchanging letters with a, a girl in the United States as a pen pal. And that's when you started your English? Yes, I started learning okay. English. Was that junior high or elementary? In junior high school. In junior high school. Mm -hmm. At that time. Now, you know, students learn English from elementary school. That's but right. But at that time, you know, we started learning English uh, at the age of 12. Okay. So, uh, you know, by exchanging some letters and pictures and postcards, and I, you know, you know, raised my interest in, you know, in the United States and mm. studying in abroad. So that was my dream when I was in a junior high school. Uh, to go to the America. Yes. To okay. study. So when did the when did the space stuff come in when you decided you wanted to go into outer space or to, <laughs> to, to see the stars? Right, right. So uh, when you know I went to the university, I started learning uh, uh, aerospace engineering to design spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Then I seeked an opportunity to study 
you know, in the United States about aerospace engineering. And this is after Todai? After Todai. Because oh. Todai is where you learned. That's where all of our astronauts come from, right? Uh, yeah. Well, so far, about everyone's been Todai. Yeah, astronauts come right. from Todai, that's right. Todai, that's the top university, just so all of you know, that's the top university <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> that's equivalent to like our Harvard or Yale or MIT. But you had to learn Our aerospace engineering. I was fascinated in the drawings, like an architecture and some mechanics, and that there are, you know, like a drawing, right. and all pens and papers at the time. <laughs> so I wanted to do that. So I learned on the engineering side. Uh, so you had to go. Was that a four-year course? Yes, four-year course. Four-year course. So after that, then you went to the states. First, I entered a master's course at Todai. And then I uh, applied for our exchange student program, and I studied at the University of Maryland mm -hmm. for one year. Okay. So you were there for one year? Yes. And what was that like? Oh, it was life-changing, you know, Lance, because it is my first time to get outside of Japan, and everything was new. <laughs> so what, you're 22, 23? 20, well, about 23. 23, 23, 24, okay, at that time, mm -hmm. when you went. Were there many other Asians around? Yes, yes. Lots there of were? students came from Asia as well. So what, years are we what years are we talking about now? This is 1980, 1990s? Oh, 1994, 1994 so 1995. Okay. okay. Uh, so then when you came back, what was your impression now you come back? Did, mm -hmm. did anyone, did you know that you were going to get into the astronaut, I guess you, no, of course you did. No, no. Well, you, didn't, you didn't already know that you were going to get into the astronaut program? No, uh, well actually I applied d when, you know, during my stay in the United, United States. Oh, that's when you applied? Yes, okay. it was my first time trial right. to the astronaut corps, but at that time I failed. I <laughs> okay, all right, I got you. Yes, I couldn't get selected. But uh, after three years later, and then I applied again, and that's the time I was selected as a candidate. Three years later? Yes. After coming back? After coming back. Okay. So you applied, wait, did you apply as soon as you came into Maryland? Or uh, were you there like a the year? Middle, in, in the, the middle. In the middle. All right, so then three years after that, so you'd mm -hmm. already been back in Japan at least two years and a half or so? Mm -hmm. And then yes. you applied again. Yes. What were you doing during that time mm -hmm. in between? What were you doing then? Oh, I worked for JAXA, okay. uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Right. Mm -hmm. doing as what? an engineer. As an engineer. Yes, and I was involved in an uh, international space station's development team. Mm -hmm. So with your team, they wanted you to go ahead and apply. Uh, Is that how it worked? Yeah, it was horrible because, you know, my job continued. During, even during the process of selection. The process of selection took almost one year, whole year. After they selected after you? Uh, after no. After you applied? After I applied. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first selection was in a, a paper test. Right. And then uh, interview and the third selection medical test and uh, some, you know, That took a year? It, it took a year. Each phase takes a couple of days okay. for selection, the second right. and the third. But uh, between the selection, it takes in a couple of months so that Zaxa gets prepared for the next phase. Okay. So for the selection, right. it takes about a year. And then what happens? They send you a letter? No. Uh, actually, I got a phone call from my <laughs> you know, senior astronaut, Dr. Mori Mamoru. Okay. He was the first Jaxa astronaut. Right. So I was, yeah, very surprised. <laughs> where, <laughs> I was where, nervous. Okay, tell me about that time. Where were you when, that, when you got that phone call? Uh -huh. Oh, it was in the morning, okay. and uh, we, everybody, it was a finalist, stayed in a hotel in Tokyo. Wait, oh, wait, so you knew you were going to, you were, e you were going to get a call, call either way. Yes, yes. So you knew. So all the people that it, that they had chosen, how many people is it? Oh, the finalists are. Eight people. So eight people came to Tokyo. Women. Yes, for the final interview. Final interview. And after the final interview, we had to stay, stay at in the your hotel room. for right. you know to keep some privacy. Or right. And then on the next day, we got a phone call. Each person. Got Everyone a phone does. Call. Yes, and I didn't expect it was from Dr. Mori Mamoru. Right. <laughs> so I was surprised and I got nervous. And right. we, you know, he asked me, "What did you eat last night?" <laughs> and something like that. Okay. So, okay, so uh, we ate some pasta with, you know, among eight finalists, and right. we chatted, you know, had a present time and so on, but, you know, I wanted to know the result first, you know, so I was right, nervous. Right. But you couldn't yeah. ask, you can't say that, you have to just listen <laughs> to what he's saying. I had to wait, Right. And uh, Dr. Mamoru mentioned, oh, okay, by the way, uh, 
you know, he's welcoming me to a new astronaut finally. And what did you do? Did, what did you do? What did you do? I was happen? so excited. So I said, thank you, of course, and I will do my best. So when you hung up the phone, what did you do? <laughs> Tell me what happened. I want to oh, hear what you did, yes, Naoko. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yata in Japanese, you know. It's so like, an, oh my goodness. Who was the first person you called? Did you oh, call anyone? Oh, to my, to my parents. You call your parents? Mm -hmm. What did they do? They just went crazy. Oh, yeah, what they well, I, what was their emotion? Yeah, well, they were, of course, surprised first, and they were pleased for me. But, you know, we had to head for the press conference immediately. No, wait, was, but they only pick one person, right? No. How many people three, are picked? Three people. Oh, three people, so five people okay. go home. Right. So it's like a, like a, like a, a TV show in a way. Oh, yes, So yes. three people get picked, mm -hmm. another three kind of, do you all get together before you leave each other? No, we didn't have time. So we <laughs> made a promise, you know, let's get together at uh, some restaurant in the hotel. And, you know, of course, you know, two or three people at the time, you know, had to go to the press conference. We knew that. Right. So the remaining people, you know, get together at the oh. restaurant. When you three and leave. Yes. And so that we know each other who picked them. Oh, you'll know. Mm -hmm. so Until the press release. Yeah. So you three are rushed off. Yes. It was you and two men. Two men. And <laughs> so what was it like when you guys see each other? What did you guys do? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we were excited <laughs> to know each other. Okay. Did you expect, you didn't expect yourself to get in. Of course no. you want to, but you of weren't course, sure. Of course, I wanted to, but I was not sure, of course. How many and women were among the eight? Oh, only one, only <laughs> me. <laughs> but that's kind of good. Because you knew that you don't have to worry about another woman making it. Mm -hmm. You're the only woman, mm -hmm. possibly. So if they mm -hmm. pick a woman, but they could have picked three guys. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Easily. Actually, the next election, the Jacks have picked three men. But how many women were there? Uh, one woman. One woman. Remaining five okay. boys, but Jackson But only all out of the eight, there was women. one woman, mm -hmm. but they picked only three men. Mm -hmm. So it happens. Of it happens, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. So you were just so. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So then the three of you get together. Mm -hmm. And you do what? What happens after that? Oh, we had a press conference and we got some interviews with the media. Do they tell you what to say? Do you know what you're going to say? No. <laughs> no one gave you a script as to no. what you have to say? No, just, you know, I was asking, you know, my feelings and what, you know, whom I called, like, you know. The same thing <laughs> I said. Asked me. Oh, that was a good question then. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So, yes, no script, actually. It's all on you. Mm-hmm. Did anyone say something that you were surprised about what they said? Because you're listening to other people too. Did somebody say something you were surprised about? Oh, yeah, I think so. Like what? Uh, because, you know, uh, well, because at that time the selection process was kind of confidence, and there's a confidency. So uh, it was not re raised who is remaining. So many of my friends, you know, didn't know even I, I was remaining as a finalist. So they, you know, saw the TV <laughs> or news or newspaper, and wow, and they're surprised, and they That's contacted right. me a lot. They didn't know. So you got so many people. Yes. Did you have yes. to have an assistant because of that to help you shift through all the people? Because, you know, it's, I'm mm -hmm. sure you, everyone in Japan that <laughs> knew you contacted you. You didn't need an assistant? Uh, at the time, no. <laughs> okay, so what happens after that? You finished that now. Your excitement started, it doesn't stop, I don't think it would ever stop. Mm -hmm. So you had your excitement. What's the next step after you do the mm -hmm. conference? What happened? Yes. So, uh, of course, among the finalists, we exchanged, you know, letters and ma messages, and uh, we thanked each other for the, you know, great experiences during the selection process. And uh, then after about two months later, uh, we started our training at the JAXA School of Space Center. Uh -huh. So what it was, was a quick process to you know move to the next. How place. long? How long was the training? How long did the training take? Oh, the training, the first basic training yes. took about uh, two years. Wait, then wait, wait, wait. we were qualified as an uh, astronaut. You had two years of training. Mm -hmm. What was in the What was the hardest part in that two years for you? The part you said, I don't <sighs> want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, are, you know, each training was demanding, of right. course, but uh, the survival training was the physically most demanding. What did you have to do? Uh, we had to spend three days in the winter forest in Russia. 
then we could use only the items inside the Soyuz spacecrafts. You actually went to, okay, they sent you to Russia. Yes. And you stayed in there for how long? For three days. Three days? Mm -hmm. Just the three of you? Just three of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the Soyuz is a capsule only right. for three people. Right. So what was that like? What did you? <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to sleep? Uh, it was too cold. You know, the temperature will go below minus twenty degrees Celsius or something like that. So and there was a lot of wind. So we had some, you know, uh, parachute clothes to you know put on the snow, and we had they have uh, some ox in the, in a space Soyuz spacecraft as an emergency kit. Okay. So we could cut the trees and made some small tents to, you know. You had to make your own tents? Of course, of course. This is real deal. This is oh, no... real deal, of course. <laughs> of course, some people are watching us at a distance. Right, they don't if it's really an emergency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to die, but mm -hmm. they let you get close to dying. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you made it through that? Yes, yeah. We did you ever through. pass out or feel like you were going to faint or anything during that time? Uh, when, you know, on the first night, I couldn't sleep at all because it was so cold. But on the second day, I slept about for two, three hours. And after I woke up, I didn't have any feeling in my lower body. It was because too cold. I lost my sense, you know. So you couldn't walk? Yeah, but after, you know, you gradually, it came back. Right. So, yeah, it was okay. No damage, no injury, but right. I was surprised. Oh. That can happen. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah. <sighs> okay. But it's, yeah, this is a very demanding training. But recently, I heard a news in an Amazon jungle: four kids survived for forty days. Right. Only. Wh where I think I heard about that. Where was it? Uh, it was in uh, Colombia. Colombia, right? Yeah, jungle. And after the airplane crash, only That's right, four, four kids. kids. How yeah. many people died? Oh uh, well. Two or three adults. Oh, they died, died but the kids made it. The, the four kids. kids. How old were the kids? Well, through the age of one through thirteen. So the thirteen was the eldest. Taking care of it. For how long were they there? For forty days. Four zero days. Forty <laughs> that days. That's amazing, right? I was what, did, what did they say they did to do it? Because they are, you know, indigenous people. Oh, they talk. were. So, so they, they knew, knew the survival techniques. They already, mm -hmm. that was their life. So what, you know, first they can They knew, they can eat, they mm -hmm. knew which things. Mm -hmm. Other people can eat something right away and exactly. that's done. Right, right. It is, you know, so But that's hard. still amazing. So it was a miracle for, you know, four kids to survive. Wow. 30 days. So I admire them and they should be on a teacher for the astronauts training. That would be something if, because exactly. if you did die in mm -hmm. the forest or something, if you right. end up landing in the forest or yes. something. What was the most pleasant thing you enjoyed oh, about? The pleasant part. It's a microgravity training experience. Training, What's that? Using an airplane. And when an airplane, you go, you know, Down. decrease. You become weightless. Yes, right. about 20, 30 seconds, seconds you right. know, which <laughs> make an You like that? Yes, I like <laughs> it. <laughs> you, didn't oh, get you will like it. But, but some people actually throw up because they, yes. they can't, their stomach gets unsettled. Yeah, it's just due to uh, gravity change. Right. Uh -huh. and after the zero G, uh, and we then, experience yeah. two Gs when right. they pull up their nose of the aircraft. Right. And we have to repeat it 40 times. <laughs> so after, you know, 20, 30 times, you know. We get yeah, dizziness. Do you really? Yes, even yeah, I got dizziness. Even you did. Well. After you do it so many times. Yes. Then you s it's like being on a wave or something. Mm -hmm. Zero G itself is so much fun. You'll enjoy it. But the two G's is the hardest part. Why? What, what happens in two G's? Uh, you know, the stomach, Your stomach drops. Pulled, yes. Underneath. Yeah. So, what, so what happens to some people? Do they actually. Yes, yes. They regurgitate. They yes. have a bag or something to go into? Yes, we have an edge kit bag. Edge kit bag. So everyone goes. Yes. Yes. Have you seen, <laughs> has anyone said that they never, nothing happened to them? Uh, yes, very few people. Very was few to show, because yeah. most people yeah. something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that is because I was a part of the Navy League, oh, and I've been on submarines, and I've been on the aircraft carriers. Everyone on a ship says almost everybody gets seasick mm -hmm. at one time oh, or another. I believe it. Everyone does, because it's a sensation you're not used to, mm -hmm. and it's that constant you know, moving, and all of a sudden you just miss, lose it, and yeah. Yes, the same thing in an airplane. 
you know, weight race training. But uh, the interestingly, when you go up to space, uh, of course we get space space sickness. What's that? It's an, uh, like a motion sickness, okay. but uh, <coughs> motion sickness and a space sickness, it's not a river bent. Why is that? So I get some motion sickness on the ground, but right. I was totally fine in space. Nothing happened to Nothing you. Nothing happened to me. <laughs> but some people it did. Yes, and you know, like in a test pilot, right. you get used to the g change right. so right. some of them get space sickness. Uh, so we can predict who's going to have space what? sickness or not. It's That's interesting. Interesting, I didn't know the that. The mechanism is different, and we don't know yet. What causes space sickness versus mm -hmm. If you get the G's and not have mm -hmm. the G's, that's interesting. Yes. So what's this? Is the same symptoms? Your stomach gets unsettled and right. you need to it's use your bag. The symptoms the same. Yeah. Get is it a certain period of time if someone gets space sickness? Uh, it depends on people. Okay. Uh, some people have space sickness for whole a week or so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some so people, you, you know, what do you mean? To it so okay, then they have nothing in their you. stomach. They have nothing in their stomach then afterwards. Right. right. So they, of course, they have to eat, but right. They but they know it's going to come right back. Mm -hmm. So what was it like up in space? Of course, that's the question everyone wants to know. Yeah, what was it like? We've seen movies about it, of course. Sure. But what was it like for you? What uh, did you notice first, I want to know? Actually, the microgravity environment is so comfortable. We don't have to sit on the chair like this. Just we can you know, float in the air, and that's it. And no, we don't have to walk. And we can just use one finger to push the wall, and you can move mm. around and right. you can control your body so like a fish in the water right so it's just you know we can get lazy in space actually right. we don't use our muscles right so, so your mattress like starts to atrophy exactly. that's why you have to have some sort of resistance yes so what do like they have what do they use do. bands what oh bands mm -hmm. or our uh, running machines or right. bike screen mm -hmm. and even uh, some uh weights? training machines weight machine but instead well, weights, of weights, uh, yeah, so weights we use right. an air pressure to get resistance. Did you push <laughs> and pull? Yes. I see. Using the air pressure. The air pressure you have in your capsule. Mm -hmm. uh. oh, 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 air pressure in that exercising machine. Exercising machine. Mm -hmm. It's built in there, okay. Exactly. But your capsule has nothing but air in it, too. Mm -hmm. So air pressure, rubber bands. Mm -hmm. Does that work in, in yes, space? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what were some of your thoughts? What was it like looking out size? What did you notice? Did you look at the stars again and did they look different now that you're out of the atmosphere? Oh, yes. You know, looking through the windows. Uh, this, this gorgeous, amazing, breathtaking view. So during the daytime, I was astonished the beauty of the Earth at, you know, uh, blue oceans and the white clouds. And the tiny, you know, horizon, thin layer of the horizon, which was bright and blue. Right. So now you say during the daytime. You mean when you're on the light side of the earth? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see that. Yes. What is it like on the dark side? Oh, the dark side. Uh, I was impressed with the lots of city lights. So the human power of civilization, yes, is obvious at the dark side. There's no doubt. So aliens know. <laughs> no, I say no, no, as you can't see them, but I'm saying aliens would know we're here. Oh, there's no doubt true. about it. I'm it's saying they can see us. They can right. see us. They can tell. They can yeah. tell. So they have to be advanced because they're not telling us they're here or not or whatever. <laughs> no? So how oh, long yes. were you up in space, first of all? Uh, it was for 15 days for 15 me. 15 days. It was very quick, so I wanted to stay longer, of course. How long do you think you could have made it? Oh, up to a year or so. But wouldn't you, the, but you'd really have to work out so that your muscles don't mm -hmm. atrophy, right? Yes. So uh, we have a schedule for about two hours every day for the exercise. Right. Mm -hmm. So that we can maintain a muscle and bone density. Right. And because of the, the I guess it's the um, equation of relativity, mm -hmm. aren't you aging slower because you're oh, further away from point. Earth? Aren't you aging slower? So you come back actually younger than everybody. <laughs> well, don't you? Uh, because the International Space Station, right. you know, rotates around the Earth right. at the speed of uh, every eight s kilometers per second. So it's less than the Earth spins. Uh, it's faster. The Earth, uh, that's right. I mean, yeah. of course, because it's closer, right? Exactly. So you, so that, mean, so that means your time is slower. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That's why you'll come back younger. Exactly. That's exactly. The further you get away, the less you age because mm -hmm. you're right. 
Yes. So it's, an, of course, a small amount. Small amount, but it still, <laughs> but happens. still happens. So the longer you're up there, the younger you're becoming. Yeah, I think so. And there is another effect. In the, if the gravity is heavier, then the time gets slower. So the surface of the heavier gravity comparing to that about 400 kilometers above. So com we have to compare those effects. So which effects is stronger? So I, uh, I have to check. But still, you know, uh, the time is changing. It's changing because of station. gravity. So yes. gravity changes the time as well. Yes, and course. also the speed. And of the, the speed, then the speed, right? Exactly, have both effects. So we have GPS right. running around the yes. Earth, and we rely on the GPS every right. day. So they have to uh, compensate that uh, time based on the relativity. Oh, because of that theory, relativity theory, yes. they have to base it upon that. Yes. Otherwise, it'd be off. Yes, bias changes right. the accuracy of the right. calculation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aren't we putting up many miniature satellites now so that we can cover the whole Earth? Yes. That's what's happening now, so mm -hmm. that we'll have 24, 24 hour coverage of the whole Earth yes. instead of just every so many hours, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I think that project's been going on for a while now where they've been mm -hmm. putting up many satellites so we can mm -hmm. cover the Earth. Yes. So for the geo, you know, uh, GPS or Japanese Michibiki is to compensate uh, its GPS accuracy inside Japan and Asian countries. So they have, uh, you know, more than 30 and 40 satellites, satellites yeah, to cover the entire globe. And China has its own system, it's a geography, uh, their positioning system. Do you and know how many satellites they have up? Uh, What's the estimate? Same the same, 40. okay. Satellite. Then the U.S. has how many satellites? About 40. Okay. Satellites. And then Germany? And it's European countries, of European course. countries, right. Yeah, about 30, 40. <laughs> and Russia has its own system. Right. About 30, 40. Right. So, in total. It's going to be huge. huge. But number. aren't they going to link? Won't they link together? Or are they just independent systems? They are independent systems. Okay. The, but the receivers are multi. Right multi we covered, okay. They can receive from every, each one. <laughs> yes. Each right. Service. So that way you can get a better coverage of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're still putting up more, aren't we? I think so. I think so, mm -hmm. right. Because I think at one time we only had the satellites going in one direction. Mm -hmm. Now we're trying to get them to go in different directions, aren't we? Yes, yes. They right. are their orbits are different. Are different now, right. Wow. How long do you think it'll be before we can actually have a full coverage? Or do we already have a full coverage? Oh, we have already full coverage. Full coverage, yes. Mm -hmm. But to uh, increase accuracy, especially in Tokyo, there are lots of buildings. That's and right. If they can only above, you know, the upper side of the satellite, they cannot see through the horizon, unfortunately, in Tokyo or like in big, big cities. Right. So th that is why they need more satellites. So they can see to get each a one. better accuracy. So that is why Japan launched its uh, compensating satellite, which is called the Michibiki. Uh -huh. Yes, to get a two or three centimeters accuracy of the GPS. Is that the closest so far? Mm -hmm. No one's that close? Yeah, yeah, that's the closest. <laughs> So Japan's got a head on that. Two centimeters. Two centimeters, they're right on top. Right? That's very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> From outer space, did you try to look at, or do you have telescopes up there so you can look at mm -hmm. Earth, for, I mean for human beings? Because I know oh, our satellites can do it. Sure. But were you able to like pass over something and pr you have binoculars or something so you could see a mm -hmm. person? Could you do that? Oh, yes. We have a big binoculars and a telescope uh, inside the International Space Station. Right. But unfortunately, even with the uh, binoculars, we couldn't see each person or each vehicle, car. You couldn't see a person or vehicle? No, no. What's the most you could see? What's the most you could see uh, with that? Oh, could I could see uh, a pyramid in Egypt. That's the only thing you could see? Yes. So about 100 meters square is the smallest that you can see? Items, yeah, we can identify. You can't go closer than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so I admire the satellites. Because <laughs> the satellite can show, Capability. if I had a pin in my hand, <laughs> it could probably get my, you know, my fingerprint. Mm -hmm. That's how good they are. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah they have no, good I know. eyes in the space. Most definitely. <laughs> Most of, it's good. And it's good for people that don't mind and bad right. for people that are worried about their freedom oh and their yeah. knowledge and stuff. So we shouldn't tell them. We should mm -hmm. just do it. Right? No, anyway. <laughs> so what happened up there that you didn't expect? 
Mm. When you were up there, of course you did all of your homework. You, mm -hmm. They tell you what to expect, this mm -hmm. and that. Did anything happen that you weren't told about that you didn't expect? Uh, of course, lots of happenings, you know, where your car, you know, uh, like an, uh, Space Shuttle's radar systems got failed during the rendezvous to the International Space Station. So we couldn't use it. So uh, we had to use the stars to track the <laughs> and uh, position of our spacecraft, the sp Space Shuttle. It's a, like a star tracker sensor. Right. It's in a backup system. And it so the computer calculated, of course, each star in our stars. location. But we have to check with our own eyes. Okay, so that study is the same thing. So we wrote uh, the star maps in a space shuttle as well. Wait, wait, wait. You physically yes. wrote mm -hmm. the star map? Oh, the star map was originally printed. Oh, so it was already printed. It but you had to use that. Yes, we had to use and it. And look at that with your eye. Mm -hmm. It's in the backup of the computer. To make sure you could dock with yes. the space station. Mm -hmm. We can get close. Get close to it. Right and then after that, then it, then it brings it in itself automatically? Yeah. If we want, you know, getting closer, close, then it we goes on hit the laser. And right. then we calculate our distance. Ah. And, uh, then you're okay. Velocity. So it was okay. How but fast are you guys traveling? Yeah, go on. Uh, so, but until we get closer, we have to use the star trackers. <laughs> so that's something you didn't expect? I didn't expect, yeah. yeah. Once, of course, we had uh, training uh, for the backup you know, scenario, but it was yeah, long ago, and we didn't expect that's it. That's right, because they don't really expect happen. that to happen, right. <laughs> of course they don't. You prepare for it, but you don't prepare for it. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to prepare for the worst because they don't expect the worst to happen. Right. But that happened. What's the worst that could have happened if that didn't happen, then you just wouldn't be able to dock. Mm -hmm. You go around a couple of times and have to come back down? Yes. That's what would have happened. It would be the scenario. And then your, yeah, then your mission would have been aborted. Mm -hmm. So everybody said, no, let's read this map and make yes. sure we get there because yes. I want to go. Right. <laughs> but this is so dangerous because we brought our real Naruto, uh the logistics module. It is so heavy, more than six tons. So <sighs> with in it inside in the space shuttle, maybe it could not land safely. So it is. Oh, yeah. so you had you had, to, had to dock to the International Space Station <laughs> anyway. So, so. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now you didn't get to go out in space. No, I had a training for the extra vehicle activities, but I didn't have a chance to go outside. Actually. Did you want to? Yes, I wanted to. Well, you wouldn't be afraid of that. No, yeah, it should be a you know <laughs> fantastic experience. Now some of the but some of the Japanese astronauts have been outside. Yes. How many? Uh, uh, many of Takao, them. Takao, uh, three, four. But no women. Five. No yet. women yet. No women yet. Mm -hmm. yeah, are you I going? Are you going back up again? Do you have a chance to go again? I wish, I wish, but uh, no plans yet because no plans. I you still can if you wanted to. Jackson. Oh, you Already. retired from Jackson, mm -hmm. so you'd have to come back in to start mm -hmm. again. Or I would find another way in the private sector. That's, tr that's <laughs> true, yeah. So that was the biggest thing when you had to, to navigate by stars. Mm -hmm. Anything else take place that you thought was really amazing or wonderful while you were there? Oh, you know, when I looked through the window at night, at the stars, it was so beautiful, and we could see the, you know, Milky Way so clearly. Different than being on Earth? Yes, uh, because without atmosphere, we could see the stars, but we, they didn't twinkle at all. At all. Mm -hmm. It was just light. They were just the dots, yeah, just light. Just dots. Mm -hmm. So it was different, and I was very surprised to see it. Wow. Someone told me, I mean, I like looking into space things and about astrology, and not astrology so much, but just I love space. I think all of us are fascinated when we look up mm -hmm. into the stars. But they say that with all of the technology we have now, the amount of space that we look at, mm -hmm. I think, as they said, is smaller than a pin drop. Mm -hmm. It's smaller than a pinhead or something. If you think about all space, yes. we only look in a it few directions. I wonder, it's not a lot, but it seems like a lot. Mm -hmm. What we see is such a tiny part in the universe. Of the universe. Yeah, I it. So how can we make a decision about it? Mm -hmm. It's hard to make a decision about it. It's like saying, it's like the blind people, they say, they go to an elephant, they're all blind, and they all describe an ele elephant mm -hmm. by touching one part of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they oh don't yes, they don't see the entire, the entire thing. But they grab one part, so one guy says it's like this, one guy says it's like that. So we can but they don't see the imagine part. <laughs> the, the whole horse. part. 
Right, so that is why um, after beyond the International Space Station, now uh, we have an Artemis program led by the United States, NASA, and Japan is aiming, and more than 20 countries are, you know, have signed the Artemis Accord. Which is? To uh, send human to the moon and to Mars. Mars. Yes, eventually. And not only going there, but this time, you know, different from Apollo era, we make some infrastructure. So we can live so there. So we can live there, yes. How long are we thinking about living at first? Uh, the first people probably only for a few weeks. And then but come back? Then They'll live for a few weeks and then come back? Uh, they, they can stay at uh, the lunar station, lunar station for but another they month or so. But they'll be on, on the planet itself mm -hmm. for maybe two weeks. On the moon. But mm -hmm. for the Mars, probably we have to stay for two years I was thinking so, so yes. Mm -hmm. Because Mars and the Earth are rotating around the sun each other. And they get close every two years. So That's that is why. a good timing to travel to Mars or come back to the Earth. Right. So we have to wait that timing. How many years is it going to be before we'll be able to do that, do you think? In your feeling? Uh, well, uh, Artemis' plan is to send uh, the you know first women and first person in cover to the moon in 2025 or 2026, mid 2020s. So it's coming soon. For two weeks, they'll stay on the moon for two weeks. Yes, at that time. 2025, 2026. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and Mars? then tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, because Elon Musk, SpaceX is he also... Really was, so he yes, could accelerate it. Ex yes, accelerating the process. So could it be in 2030s? I hope. Or sooner. Or sooner. Or later. We don't <laughs> know yet. That's it. Would you go? Would you go to Mars? Sure. Would you go, Lance? Hmm. <sighs> it's a, I don't know if I'd want to take that risk because of my family. Mm -hmm. And if my sons have children, mm -hmm. mm, I don't know. It yeah, depends on how how it, it's it depends on how it was it, if it was presented in the right way. I'd mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. It's not out of fear. It's out of losing. But at the same time, I'd want my kids, my grandchildren, to know what their grandfather did. So I might go mm -hmm. just to show them what's possible. If I'm convinced, and they say, okay, in two years I'll come back and I'll be 79 or something, mm -hmm. and da 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 da, because I'll be actually younger than everybody when I come back <laughs> if I go to Mars. Yes. So I think. <laughs> Relativity is zero. <laughs> so I don't know if I would mind that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind doing it if they needed to see how old you could be to make it. Mm -hmm. But if they told me I may not make it, I'm I think it's right to do someone in their 70s because I've lived long enough that if I don't make it back, it's okay. Oh. That's how mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. If I don't make it, I'm okay. Because mm -hmm. I've had a good life. I see. And I enjoy oh. it. So I would do it. Yeah, and if I make it back, I'd be even better okay because I'd sure. be younger and I would enjoy it. So wow. yes. Well, that's a very inspiring way to that's think it. about that's how it. I, that's how I think about it now because I've enjoyed my life. Mm -hmm. you know, and even if I couldn't spend time with my grandchildren, if I have any, because I don't have any yet, if I had them, I'd want them, I'd feel good in my mind knowing that they'd say their grandfather went to the Mars. He was yes. one of the first to go to Mars or mm -hmm. something. That'd be interesting. Yes. That's going to wow. be a huge Why, you have connections? You have, you have connections that could possibly get me there? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I'll be a guinea pig. I'll be a guinea pig. <laughs> It'd be great. Yeah, because my dream is to create some small school on the moon someday. And, and you'd be there, would you be uh, there? Yeah, I'd like to be there as a teacher. <laughs> because it'd be nice to, you know, study all together with, you know, among students from various regions and countries from the Earth, you know, on the moon. And they stay together on the moon and they look at the Earth together and they learn about the Earth together. So they, you know, once they return to each region or country, it's probably, and they grow up, they can, you know, have, have a different perspective. A different perspective of they the understand. Yeah. Do, what's the longest that anyone's ever stayed on the moon? Do you know from other countries, like Russia, uh, how long has it ever stayed? During the Apollo era, our American astronauts, 12 people, astronauts, uh, stayed about each day, about one week. They stayed on they the stayed moon on for, the moon one for one week? For one week. Okay. Because the moon has a different day uh, cycle, so 14 days continuous, you know, bright daytime, and 40 days, you know, continuous the darkness. Right. darkness. 
Right. So. And we never see that because it doesn't rotate. Mm -hmm. It's fixed to the earth, so we never see the dark side. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And that gets really, really cold, I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, minus 150 degrees That's Celsius. That's right. So, so it is hard to survive the night yes. on the moon. Mm -hmm. But you can stay on the light side the whole yes. time, couldn't you? It's easier, yes. Right. But then would you wouldn't be able to see the Earth. You wouldn't be able to see Earth, would you? Yeah, so with the South Pole, the very limited area could have a 24 both. hours. Yeah, right, light. you get to see both. Exactly. You'd so have to be this there. This is a favorite place to go to. So well, that means all the countries want to go there. So that's a problem. <laughs> so who gets there? Mm -hmm. Who gets yeah, the, the control? Yeah, the first come, first That's right. Kind of race is going and who has the power to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. And I forgot about that. So there's only a limited space. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the South Pole and the Moon have that lots of water as well, in an ice shape or you know among the you know some sands or rocks. So we know that now. Kind of water, yes. So we can actually we could convert that if we wanted mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So that is why yeah the South Pole is a you know good target for the exploration. Uh. We could go on and on and on, I'm telling mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. There's so much, because there's so much, I, I mean, just knowing from the information we have available to us, mm -hmm. the fact that they say that the, the moon could be a part of Earth. Mm -hmm. from, the, from when it was hit by an astronaut, it could be mm -hmm. a part of Earth. That's why it's right. stuck in the orbit so close. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that true? Uh, yes, many researchers consider you know, that's, you know, the uh, theory, but we are not sure yet. Right. So that is why you have to explore more. To find out mm -hmm. if it really is a part of yes. Earth or if it's just a body that just came at the same time. Yeah. And, you know. Exactly. Some ideas, you know, some asteroids, you know, captured from the uh, from the outside, outside and got there and it rounded off or whatever. Mm -hmm. or That's interesting. Mm -hmm. How far? The moon's really far from the Earth. We think it's close, but mm -hmm. it's pretty far, right? Yes. It takes three days to get there. And it's a At what speed? Oh, the current speed. Is <laughs> the current speed, the current speed, right? So. But it would take us three days. Mm -hmm. Are you? Do you have it in sight the whole time when you go to the moon? Would you have it in sight the whole time? Yeah, for the three days. Yeah. You'd be able to see it. Uh, the moon. Yeah, we should see it. I mean, when you I mean, the craft that you're in. Mm -hmm. If you're going to it, would you still see it while you're going, or would you not see it sometimes? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you mean uh, on the way to the yeah, moon? Yeah, on the way to the moon. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, usually, yeah, going, you know, it, it depends, but uh, during Which your trajectory is? Yes. Right. We go directly to the moon, so right. we could see that. The whole time. The whole time, I see. yeah, ah, as a target. Some, you know, unmanned uh, lunar probe, you know, in order to save the propellant, they take some complicated Slingshot, yeah, right, slingshot yeah. and kind of trajectory, so the moon kind of meets the, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it should be beautiful it to see be. the aura from the moon. Yes, I yeah. think so. Well, we've seen it. Everyone's seen it through movies, on the movies mm -hmm. and stuff. We've all mm -hmm. seen it that way. But to be there yes. would be different. And it's could your body different. take what's there? And another, I think the biggest thing people would have to deal with, can they handle the isolation, mm -hmm. the silence they'd have, and, and being in small space? Oh, yes. That's something you have to learn mm -hmm. to deal with. I and some so people too. have a problem with that. Yes, that's I more don't. challenging. That's right. Because uh, International Space Station has an internet, so we have to com we can communicate with friends and families on the ground. But on the moon or to Mars, you know, there is no internet yet. So you'd have so no way to communicate. You're wrong. Yes, you're wrong. Of course, we can communicate no, we can with the commu mission control. Of course, yes. Voice. And they could pass it on mm -hmm. if they wanted to, yeah. But it's limited. So. Oh, okay. So that's another challenge. Uh, for right now, because we don't mm -hmm. have a way to figure it out. Oh. Is there anything else that you'd want to tell me about, Naoko, that I haven't thought about? Oh. That's really essential what you're doing? I mean, I think it's just all so fascinating. <laughs> Before going to space, I thought the space was what kind of admirable place to reach out. And uh, I wanted to go to space since my childhood. But when I reached there and I looked the earth from the window, I realized, well, in the vastness of the darkness of the universe, the Earth is special. Earth is an admirable place. So I changed my perspectives 180 degrees. So now I, you know, realize more the Earth is a spaceship in the universe, and we have to protect it as a crew member of the universe. And each person is a crew member of the Earth spaceship. So we are traveling in the, in the universe all together. 
that's a whole different perspective. Mm -hmm. People forget this is a big spaceship. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That's of interesting. Yeah, of course, we probably really understand that, you know, in my you know, head. But, but it wasn't emotional. Exactly. But now it's emotional for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is why, uh, you know, I hope more and more people can have an access to space. That's why you want to have a classroom on the moon. So yes. those kids can come back with that vision and mm. teach that mm -hmm. so we can spread that feeling out. Yes, exactly. That mm -hmm. is so good. Mm -hmm. That's a good thought. So your little soldiers out there spreading the seed oh. of knowledge to everyone else emotionally. Yes, yes. It's not just a theory. Mm -hmm. It's real. Right. Because when I started in the you know, United States, when I was a you know, college student, I was so impressed. And I realized, oh, the world is so big, you know, bigger than I imagined. So I wanted to experience you know, more kids to you know, have the same feeling. Oh. Nalko, I cannot thank you so much. Before I end the podcast, there's always a question I ask everyone. Oh, okay. Knowing what you know, seeing what you've seen, if you could go back in time okay. and meet the younger Naoko, oh. <laughs> what advice would you give her okay. and how old would she be? Mm. Wow, it's a hard question. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Well, I would say, well, I would say to younger me that, well, the world is bigger than you imagine. So let's try, let's challenge yourself. Don't, you know, get, don't, you know, worry about the failures. You know, just, you know, try, keep trying. So that's what I wanted to tell. That's beautiful. And that's what life is about, I believe. Thank you so much, oh, Thank you, Lance. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to thank all of you for watching this show. Make sure you press like and subscribe. And never forget, it's all unknown. So continue to reach for the stars. Because you are too blessed to be stressed. <laughs>